now request Professor C. N. R. Rao to address all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor C. N. R. Rao. Mr. Hamid Ansari, our Honorable Governor, Vajibhai, Kudar Bhai Varaji, our Science Minister, Mr. Pati, Professor Yuvar Rao, other distinguished persons in the days, many distinguished people here, fellow teachers, fellow scientists, and fellow conspirators. I am very happy to be here on this occasion. I have been associated, I was associated with the BGVS as a founding president long, long ago. I am still associated in some indirect fashion with the Karnataka Rajya Parishad. I am happy to be here. I have come here not because there is a public function, because our Vice President is there who is the champion for the cause we are talking about. And second reason, the cause of this organization itself is very laudable. That is why I have come here. Otherwise, I can find 100 reasons not to come. The reason that we all have to give importance to this is, in this entire country, there are two important things we have to do with three. Removal of poverty, improving health, and, pro 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 and providing scientific literacy to all the people in India, particularly to our children. These are the three most important things. You may do everything else, I think they will all go away as nothing unless these three things are done first. The foundation of India has to be the betterment of the common man, the common citizen, the poor man in the village who, knows, who has scientific literacy, who has good health, and who is not too poor. I think it's very, very important. And in this context, I would like to say a few words. People ask me, what is, why should you do scientific research? What is science to do with social transformation? I'm a great believer that science has been a social transformer without claiming to be one. Even though our social scientists will claim to be greater transformers of society, science has contributed in a very big way. Let me give you only one example. Of course, you can say we have created vaccines, which have created better, given you better health, better quality of life, better transportation, better communication. I'm not going to talk about that. Just one discovery. I remember when I was just doing my PhD in the United States long, long ago, more than 60 years ago, transistor was discovered. That one discovery in physics, transistor, has changed man's life. Every radio, every television, the entire internet, everything the man does is based on that one discovery, namely the transistor. I think that is one of the biggest transformers, transformers of society in the world. I think that's what we should not forget, how science itself contributes to social transformation. But today is not the time to talk about that. What I'm a bit concerned is about the way we teach, the way we pay attention to schools and children. Just last week, there has been a great unfortunately depressing uh, 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 description of Indian science in Nature magazine. It's very depressing. They're not doing well in science. I'm not going to talk about that. However, what I am interested in is, where does India stand in school education? Particularly school science education. I hope you have seen that. The latest ratings for the best teaching in the world and best teachers in the world are in Finland. South Korea, Singapore, they all come next. America is pretty down, it's not in the top. But we, we are, as you expect, clearly in the bottom. I think I feel ashamed of that. I have lived in this country for 81 years now, and I, I expect better schools and better teaching for our children. And it is very important that everything we do reflects this thing. Our budgets the way we spend money on things, the priorities in life, priorities in government, should all reflect these major important things that India faces today. Giving a better life for our children of the future. As Dr. U. R. Rao said, we'll have many more children that will come to India. My estimate is in another 10 to 15 years, there'll be additional three to four crore additional children coming for higher education. What are we going to do with these children? What type of education? And do they have the right background? 
Do they have the scientific literacy, scientific temper? So they view the world differently, they view the world properly. <laughs> I don't want to give a big speech today. Yes, what I'm worried about is, I would like to see an India, you see, as a grow old, you as you grow old, you worry about the future much more than when you are young. Not future for yourself. I know I have a very limited future. But the future of this country. I would like to see an India where there is only one people of India. Children of one God, all of us are the same. That's India. Where all citizens of India, all children of this great country, have the right attitude, right scientific temper. I would like to see that India in another 20 years. For this, we all have to contribute. It's not enough only activists and NGOs contribute to it. It has been indirectly to be a social revolution of some sort, where teachers contribute, people contribute, ordinary citizens contribute, the government contributes by providing the right encouragement, right budgets, and more importantly, or equally importantly, the media contribute. The media, of course, today, media's contribution to this is marginal, almost nothing. I think we are carried away by slogans, or we are carried away by terrible depressing news. The more depressing the news is, the better place it finds in a newspaper. Yeah. But I've never seen a major discovery done in science in my own life, I'm telling you. My own, my own work gets written, written up all over the world, not in India. In India, the front page will be the, all the worst things that human beings can do. Murders, rapes, and of course, how much this young boy who got an engineering degree, how high a salary he got in some miserable company. Who cares? This is not what India we want. We want an India of a different kind, more sophisticated, intellectually more mature, and a country which can have a real future based on its strengths. I hope our conference here will talk about these things and to see the foundation of India is strong. Thank you.